weeks ago, I was in San Francisco, and I used my Uber app to get a taxi. And it told me that I needed to wait for one minute. But eventually, it took two and a half minutes before it got there, and I felt annoyed. And then, a couple of days later, I was in a fairly remote spot, and again, I used my app to get a taxi. And it told me that it would take six minutes, and again, I felt annoyed. And I thought, wow, have I changed? I mean, just a couple of years ago, I would have been happy both times, because, you know, in the old days, we were very happy to get a taxi within 10 minutes. So, I've changed. We have changed. We have become very demanding and extremely self-centered. And every time we have a very easy and convenient experience with a company, that becomes the new standard for every company to del deliver from that moment onwards. We have become used to this kind of service so rapidly that I get annoyed having to wait for a taxi for two and a half minutes. Digital and mobile technologies have enabled us to be connected all the time and to be in the center of the universe. They have given us, the customer, the power. We literally hold the whole world in our hands. And the story of the flower and the bees has basically reversed. In the old days, companies used to be the flower, and we customers used to be the bees, and they had to attract us as customers. But this has flipped, it has reversed. We have become the flower, and companies are the bees. And we decide when they get in and under what conditions. Not too soon, not too late, not too frequently, and with the right message. We have literally gained the power. We have become the center of the world. And the biggest metaphor for this is, of course, the selfie. Although, I must admit that some people still have a hard time making a selfie. <laughs> and you know, in 2016, Hillary Clinton found out that she was really famous when everybody turned their back on her to make a selfie with her in the background, and then spread it through their network. It was the example of us being both self-centered and connected. So, for companies, this means that customer centricity is no longer an option. They either put us in the center, or they become obsolete. We have become their bosses. If we decide not to buy from them again, they're dead. But then, what does it really mean putting the customer in the center of everything you do? You know, usually I'm on the other side telling executives about this. It has been a major shift for them, you know, with us having the power. And they need to get away from focusing on products and solutions first, and then think about how to attract us as customers. Now they have to start with our pains, our needs, and then decide if they can come up with a product or solution. And basically, that's exactly what Uber did they took away the annoying parts of the experience of getting a taxi. The beginning, trying to get one, and the end, having to pay for it. Because, you know, they wouldn't accept a credit card, or the machine was not working, or if you pay cash, they wouldn't have change. It was lousy. And so, starting with the customer really sounds easy, but from an employee perspective, what if you are an employee that never gets to meet or actually talk to a customer. At Zappos.com, which is basically like the Zalando of the US, they found a solution to this. Every single employee needs to take a turn in their customer service contact center every now and then, especially during the busy holiday season. And that way, they get to talk to customers and help them with the issues that they have. So I talked about the shift of power from companies to us customers. And we have become very radical, not only in the way we react to some experiences, remember me getting annoyed having to wait for another 90 seconds, 
but also in the way we react when the experience is actually very negative. We may forgive once, we may forgive twice, but after three negative experiences, we just turn to another company. And then next to this self-centeredness, this individualism, there's also the duality with us being tribal. People belong to tribes. And some used to be, and some still are, demographically defined, like this primitive tribe. And people used to be member of one tribe only, but now we can be part of multiple tribes. And it starts at a very early age, even in school. I remember in my time, we had the punks, and the rockers, and the yups, and the goths, and so on. And tribes just emerge. It's not like someone stands up and says, let's start a tribe. And tribes share a common idea, a common interest, a common communication channel even. And the key word for tribes is that they are connected. And that's what technology has really enabled us to do as tribal members. We can be a tribal member of a tribe with members all over the world. The common interest is what binds us. And there's hundreds of them. Besides these hipsters, you also have the sustainables, the mindful, the vegans, the food lovers. And they all use their communication channel of preference, like, for instance, Pinterest or Instagram. And there are so many tribes nowadays, and they all have their own do's and don'ts. We, as tribal members, we make up our own rules and regulations, and we choose our symbols. Yes, we choose our symbols. We don't let anybody decide for us. And that's why these symbols might change. Did you know, for example, that the New York hipster scene has recently turned to knitting? <laughs> and then companies still think they can create communities, that they can impose what they want, but they can't. The only thing they can really do is listen. Listen and observe. And connect with what we as tribes do and want, what symbols we choose and which ones we abandon. And that's exactly what Citizen M, a global hotel chain, has done. They connect with the mobile citizen, the tribe of the business traveler. They have created a very specific concept with small rooms, but huge living room type uh, a lobby, and most importantly, a bar that's open 24-7. And they make sure that they're on the communication channel of their tribal members. In fact, their employees are measured by the number of positive posts on social media. And does that mean that they never get any negative posts? Well, of course not but usually they are from unsatisfied members of other tribes. Like the negative feedback of the stereotype American tourist expecting a Hilton doesn't really bother them. On the contrary, it reinforces their tribal brand. And I talked about symbols being important for tribes, and the tribe of the fast and successful businessman has chosen Tesla for their symbol. Tesla didn't create a community, but yet, if they come up with new software for their cars, within hours, their huge fan base puts YouTube videos online and shout about the new features on their social channels, reinforcing again the brand. And as tribes, you know, we can make brands, but we can also break them almost overnight. The same tribe of fast and successful businessmen used to love Blackberry, but no more. They've turned away from that symbol, Blackberry's dead. And you know what? Just a couple of weeks after, Bloomberg Business Week referred to it as an ancient Canadian communication device. Now, we've become really empowered. There has been a huge shift in power from companies to us customers. But whether we act as individuals or tribal members, 
we are always emotional human beings. Yes, we tend to use our rational brain to justify our choices, yet we do decide emotionally. And once companies start to get this, they realize that it's no longer about business to business or business to consumer, but that it has become human to human all the way. People to business with people. So we want companies to focus on us um, customers as human beings. And as a human being, we have five basic emotions, which were laid out beautifully in the Pixar movie Inside Out. Five basic emotions, four of which are negative and one is positive. And we try to avoid these negative emotions as much as possible. And you know, they mostly surface when companies mess up with processes and procedures. And so to avoid negative emotions, they should automate to the max. And that's where technology really plays a big role, like, for example, with Uber. And then avoiding these four negative emotions means that we focus on the one positive emotion, which is joy. We always look to maximize joy. And you know, joy can only be evoked by humans. Robots can't do that, nor can any other type of technology, at least not yet. The human connection is the one to create joy. And now, we don't like to focus, and we don't focus on products or solutions. These days, it is all about sex. Mind you, it is where they see and it stands for customer experience. <laughs> and it goes hand in hand with the other type of sex, customer expectations. We have joy, we experience joy as soon as our expectations are met or even slightly exceeded. So what should good sex be like? It should be fast, easy, fun and simple. Mind you, I'm still talking about customer experience, right? And it should be fast. Why? We, because we have become the five seconds generation. We want everything and we want it now. And yet, every Monday at noon, I experience this at the supermarket near the office. They're stealing my time big time and I hate it. And so that's exactly what Amazon Go is trying to focus on and to take away. You can just walk in, you get recognized by your smartphone, you pick your groceries and you walk back out. That's their slogan, just walk out. And by the time you hit the curb, your account has been settled. Now, I must admit that because of curiosity and eagerness to find out about this experience, this is what happened when they first opened. Huge lines outside on the streets. And then next to being fast, it should also be easy. That's what Alipay is enabling people. Just pay by smiling. And then add a little fun factor to it as well. I love this one. Come in and try the worst salad one woman on TripAdvisor ever had in her life. <laughs> You're dying to go in, aren't you? And then finally, it should also be simple. And simple is about the interface. Make it simple to use. The Amazon Dash button is a perfect example. You just press, and within three hours, the product is delivered to your doorstep. How easy can it get? But then Generation Z doesn't want to be overwhelmed by choices either. They want you to make it simple for them. And that's exactly what Morioka Shoten, a bookstore in Tokyo, is doing. It's a single room and they sell copies of a single book. They change the book every week. And the owner and the customers, they love it. So fast, easy, fun and simple. Every experience needs to be like that. It has become the new norm. And companies are on the verge of big change. 
they have to put the customers and the tribes in the center of everything they do. And they should be using technology to the max to make it as personal as possible. These days, it's all about personalization and anticipation. Research by Salesforce.com has proven that half of the consumers and 75% of business buyers expect companies to make relevant suggestions to anticipate their needs before they reach out. So it needs to be personal and tailored and relevant. Ah, oh, that's a challenge. Because, you know, at the same time, companies can't overstep this invisible line of us feeling manipulated. And that's exactly what Facebook and Cambridge Analytica did. So companies need to focus on us, both as individuals and as tribal members. And this may sound like a duality, yet they need to deal with it. I, for example, <coughs> being the member of a mindful tribe, I am much more purpose-driven than I am profit-driven. And you know, with the next gens, this tendency is growing. We will be witnessing the killing fields of retail in the next couple of years. Companies will radically need to shift their focus from driving profit to aligning to our purpose. Big data, artificial intelligence, and robotizations will be their major tooling to both capture and anticipate our need. And they will do wisely by not only hiring a lot of data scientists, but also getting anthropologists and sociologists on board as well to make the connection between digital and human. You know, for us it's easy. We can just be who we are in the tribe we're in. And they have a challenge, and they basically have but two options. They can either sit down and do nothing, and join the killing field soon, I'm afraid, or they can put extreme effort into three things getting to know us as customers, getting to know us as tribe members, and finding out what our purpose in life is, to eventually deliver to us the homo futuris, the wow experience we are all looking for. I thank you very much.